Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to show you is that if we've got a quadratic equation and the roots turn out to be complex numbers that there's a relationship between those complex roots. And we'll go on to use the concept that we discover and I'll give you uh, an example of a typical question that we can get and I'll give you one to work out as well. So if we've got this quadratic equation x squared minus 6x plus 13 equals 0, if we wanted to solve it we could use the quadratic formula. Remember a is 1, b is minus 6, c is 13 and if we're using the quadratic formula it will be x equals minus b so that would be 6 plus or minus the square root then of b squared minus 4ac so that would be minus 6 all squared minus 4 times a times c and that's all divided by 2a so that would be 2 times 1. And if we work this out, we end up with 6 plus or minus the square root of, and we've got 36, and here we've got minus 52, which comes to minus 16. And that's all divided by 2 times 1, which is 2. Now, we've got 6 then, plus or minus, and the square root of minus 16 is 4i. And that's all divided by 2. So our roots turn out to be 6 divided by 2, which is 3, plus or minus, and then 4i divided by 2 is 2, 2i. So we have two roots, 3 plus 2i and 3 minus 2i. And do you notice that they are a complex conjugate pair? And this always happens with quadratic equations that give rise to complex roots. So what I'm trying to say then is that if we've got the roots alpha and beta of a quadratic equation and they turn out to be complex numbers, then they are always a complex conjugate pair. Now we can use this concept to help us do some questions on quadratic equations. For instance, suppose we are asked to find the quadratic equation that has 5 minus 3i as one of its roots. Well, if we know that one of the roots, let's say then it's alpha and it equals 5 minus 3i, then the other root, let's say beta, must be the complex conjugate of this, which will be 5 plus 3i. Now if we know that these are the roots, they must have come from an equation looking something like this. x minus alpha multiplied by x minus beta equaling zero. Because we would have said x minus alpha equals zero or x minus beta equals zero and that would have led to x equaling alpha, this root here, or x equaling beta, this root here. So all we need to do is put in these values. Now I'm going to use square brackets here because I can see we've got brackets within brackets. So we've got x minus 5 minus 3i and that's being multiplied by x minus beta which is going to be 5 plus 3i and that equals 0. And if we expand this out we've got x times x, that's x squared then we've got x times the minus 5 plus 3i, so that I'm going to write that as minus 5 plus 3i, all multiplied by x. And then we've got minus 5 minus 3i multiplied by x, so minus 5 minus 3i being multiplied by x. And then we've got minus all of 5 minus 3i being multiplied by minus of all of 5 plus 3i. So it's going to be a plus 5 minus 3i multiplied by 5 plus 3i and that's going to equal 0. So we've got x squared, now let's expand the bracket. We've got minus 5x and then minus 3ix and here we've got minus 5x and then plus 3ix and then when it comes to expanding these, we're going to have plus 5 times 5, well that's 
5 squared 25 we're going to have 15i but then we're going to have minus 15i so that's going to go to zero and then we've got minus 3i times plus 3i so that's going to be minus 9i squared or simply plus 9 and that equals zero and if we group together terms now we've got x squared and then minus 5x minus another 5x is minus 10x minus 3ix plus 3ix well that goes out and then you've got 25 and 9 which is going to be 34 and that equals 0 so there is your quadratic equation okay well I hope you've got that idea I've got a question for you you might like to try now very similar to the one that we've just done and here it is you might like to have a go so just pause the video have a go and uh, come back when ready and I'll run through the solution okay well, let's see how you got on well again if we know that one of the roots let's say alpha is minus 4 plus 2i then we know that the other root say beta must be the complex conjugate of this so that would be minus 4 minus 2i and we know that therefore if they are the roots x minus alpha multiplied by x minus beta should have equaled 0 and we can now write these values in we've got x minus alpha so that's minus 4 plus 2i and that's being multiplied by x minus beta so that's x minus and then in brackets minus 4 minus 2i and that equals 0 so we just need to expand the bracket now so we've got x squared and then we've got x times this bracket it's going to be minus though so we've got minus minus 4 minus 2i multiplied by x and we've got x times this bracket but again it's going to be minus minus 4 plus 2i multiplied by x and then finally we've got this bracket multiplied by this bracket but we've got a positive here and then it's going to be minus 4 plus 2i multiplied by minus 4 minus 2i and that equals 0 so if we expand this bracket out here we've got plus 4x and then we've got minus minus 2i so that's plus 2i times the x so that's plus 2ix and when it comes to this one we've got minus minus 4 so that's plus 4x and then we've got minus plus 2i minus 2i times x is minus 2ix and for this one here we're going to have minus 4 times minus 4 which is plus 16 and we are going to get plus 8i minus 8i so that's going to be 0 and then we've got plus 2i times minus 2i so that's going to turn out to be plus 4 and that equals 0 just group together now all like terms we've got x squared we've got 4x and 4x there so that's 8x 2ix minus 2ix that goes to 0 and then you've got 16 plus the 4 so that's plus 20 and that equals 0 so hopefully you got that and uh, that gives you now an idea of how we can work out then quadratic equations once we know one of the complex roots the other being the complex conjugate of it okay